Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This time we are going to check out the working of two switch forward converters with waveforms, the advantages, disadvantages, and application. So let's go for a ride. The forward converter is basically a buck converter with the transformer inserted in between. The forward converter consists of a MOSFET, two diodes, a transformer, inductor and an output capacitor. The construction of the forward converter is like this. When the MOSFET is turned on, the current starts flowing through this primary in this direction. And due to electromagnetic induction, the voltage is induced in the secondary winding. So the current flows in this direction. So the diode D1 gets forward biased. The current flows through this LC filter and it provides power to the load. When this MOSFET is turned off, the circuit is open. Hence, the current in the primary and secondary winding falls to zero. But due to the sudden change in the current and stored energy, the polarity of the inductor changes. Now the inductor acts as a source for the circuit. So the current provided by the inductor flows in this direction and D2 gets forward biased, providing the power to the load and voltage is kept constant DC. So this is how a basic forward converter works. When the MOSFET is on, everything is fine. But real trouble starts when the MOSFET is turned off. As these coils of the transformer act as the inductors. When the MOSFET is turned off, the residual energy stored in the primary coil has no power to go anywhere. So within some on-off cycles of the MOSFET, the core of the transformer will saturate and might destroy the MOSFET connected in the primary due to very high stress put on it. Well, to avoid that, we have to reset the transformer. Last time we have seen that this can be done by tertiary winding method and active clamping. You can click on this card to check out those previous videos. Well, with these configurations, we cannot go for higher power applications. Hence, to overcome that, there is a third method where we can add two diodes and two MOSFETs like this in the circuit. This configuration is known as double-ended forward converter. It is also known as two-switch forward converter or a two-transistor forward converter because it has two active switches. Let's see the working of this converter. As usual, we'll divide the operation into two parts. In the first part, the MOSFETs Q1 and Q2 are turned on together. At the same time, the transformer gets energized, transferring the energy through the primary end to the secondary. On the secondary side, the D1 conducts and gives output to the load. When both MOSFETs are turned off, the polarity of the transformer primary winding is reversed and the diode D3 and D4 are forward biased and the residual energy is fed back into the supply. These diodes conduct until all the magnetizing energy in the primary is returned into the input supply. Since diode D3 and D4 clamp the input voltage, there is no need of a snubber circuit in this converter. On the secondary side, the freewheeling diode D2 and inductor do their job and provide power to the output load. In other words, the primary winding itself acts as the reset winding. But putting off time of the MOSFET longer than the on time will only reset the transformer. Let's see the waveform of this converter. This is the PWM given to the gates of the both MOSFETs. So when the gate pulse is high, the MOSFET turns on and the voltage across both MOSFETs is zero. 
and current starts rising. The diode D3 and D4 are reverse biased, hence there is no current flowing through them. The voltage across the secondary winding starts rising up to input voltage upon primary turns. As the voltage across secondary increases, the current starts increasing as well and it goes up to load current. So the output voltage across the load is constant DC which is filtered by this LC filter. Now in the second stage, the MOSFETs are turned off. The voltage across each of these rises up to input voltage due to stored energy in the primary winding. So total circuit voltage becomes twice of input voltage and current across both of them falls to zero. At this time, the diodes D3 and D4 are forward biased and they start conducting so the current across D3 and D4 reaches up to higher limit immediately and start decreasing until the primary of the transformer resets. The voltage across secondary winding will be minus input voltage upon primary number of turns. The stored energy in the L1 starts providing power to the load so the current of the L1 is decreasing which keeps the output voltage constant. Well after some time the transformer resets and voltage across each MOSFET goes down up to half of input voltage. So the total circuit voltage is equal to input voltage. Well they are already off so the current is zero. Now the diodes D3 and D4 are reverse biased and they stop conducting. So the current across them is zero as well. Similarly, the voltage across the secondary winding of the transformer will be zero. The current of the inductor keeps decreasing in this phase as well, providing power to the output and output voltage is maintained constant again. So if you see, there are basically three steps of working of double-ended forward converter. And these steps repeat every time to get the constant power at the output. Every power MOSFET has a body diode connected in anti-parallel direction. This diode basically protects the MOSFET from inductive loads. It provides the bypass path for inductive current to remove the stored charge out of the MOSFET. But this topology is one of those functions where the body diode of the MOSFET doesn't play any significant role. And for that very reason, it has the benefit of no body diode conduction. This topology handles more power than any other forward converter because the voltage across each MOSFET doesn't rise beyond the input voltage. This topology is very easy to implement but due to insertion of one MOSFET and two diodes, it becomes quite bulky and expensive. Also, the duty cycle of the PWM frequency cannot be more than 50%. If it goes beyond that, then it becomes very difficult to reset the transformer. The output voltage of the forward converter depends upon the number of secondary turns, number of primary turns, duty cycle, and the input voltage where the power requirements are around 150 watts to 750 watts. So these are very popular for ATX power supplies or in easier words in computer power supplies. Despite of its small size, this power supply can provide up to 650 watts of total power if we use double-ended forward converter topology in it. Well. That's all about the double-ended forward converter. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel. And finally, thanks for watching.